Hello and welcome, I'm Marumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's play some more Norway in EU4. So, Norway, uh, that's us, is kind of doing okay. We're slowly recovering from the war exhaustion that Sweden imposed upon us. Sweden, meanwhile, is trying to siege back their holdings that got occupied by the Waldensian heretics, which um, spawned actually in Jomtland, I believe it was, when they sieged against me, and then they just kind of went north and sieged their way around. So, yeah, um, I've been reading the comments, and I've actually held off on recording any more of this campaign until I could, could read the comments on the previous episode. So this is literally, like, um, just after having read the first 50 or so comments on episode 3 that I'm actually recording this. And I think I agree with um, the idea selection. That's the main reason I was holding off on it. I was really torn. I definitely didn't want to do exploration because we're going to get that automatically. Keep in mind... Oopsie. Keep in mind, we get the uh, call of our forefathers, explorers and conquistadors, as part of our our national ideas. We get these automatically as we fill in regular ideas. Um, it's the exact same thing here. In fact, ours, I believe, is actually better because it gives us the colonial range plus 33%. So if you end up getting both, then it just means you're kind of wasting... Um, you're wasting an idea. I mean, you're buying an idea that does nothing. So... Plus, I've already done this. Like, every time I do a colonization, I always end up taking exploration ideas. Don't get me wrong, it's a really good idea group, especially with the Naval Force Limits modifier. Um, the Global Settler increase is huge. Global Tariffs might be really important if you actually do a lot of colonization. Um, and then the permanent CB against the other Pagans. It's all good, but... I'm leaning towards... Um, okay, military is out because we need to stay up on military tech. Diplomacy, I think we need to stay up on Diplotech as well because we are, like, a naval power. So that really does leave, like, either economic ideas um, to potentially have more money, administrative ideas so that we potentially have more income, or, sorry, more, more mercenaries, lower costs, so we can actually, like, use a small amount of money to overpower our, our overlord. Um, possibly even innovative. That reduces mercenary costs as well, tech costs down. Um, helps build up technology, like uh, military tradition and naval tradition. And in addition, uh, Innovative gives you a whole bunch of random events that can pop up that just give you bonus points and stuff. So we don't really need to stay up on Advent Tech. In fact, we got to Advent Tech 4 um, fairly quickly. However, I feel like level 5 is just so important. Level 5 is the one that unlocks the Temple and the Constable. So I don't know that I really want to want to hold off on getting that Fantastic tax income plus one. So anyway, long story short is I haven't made up my mind yet. So let's just play. <laughs> just play. I'm gonna play on speed three for a moment because I, I don't remember as much about what's going on. It's been a few days since I played last. So we're currently culture converting this uh, province up here. That's gonna get rid of some of the revolt risk. It's gonna help increase our income as well. It should also increase the manpower efficiency. Interesting, so Feudal Monarchy gives us the plus 10%, taking us to 77 overall. Cool, I really, really like that change. There's so many good changes in this beta patch, or 1.5, effectively. I'm, I'm, I'm expecting within the next few days, as I play this, that it's going to actually change over to 1.5. Because the, the patch was announced, um, well, like, two or three weeks ago. And this is the second iteration of the beta patch, so... Um, a lot of people were kind of pulling for expansion ideas, which gives us the colonist. Um, the merchant could be nice. Global settle. It's like a, a neutered version of exploration, um, except that it gives you more diplomacy relations, uh, shipbuilding time, and then uh, the global trade power thing. And then it allows you to expand into Asia, which I don't know if we're going to actually do that. <clears throat> so, we were trying to improve relations with people that could support us. And there was a couple, there were a couple really good comments as well. Do we get this now? I guess we do. It doesn't really exactly do that much for us at the moment. I mean, like, oh, I really want to unlock the new ships, but that's a long way off. Level 9. Maybe we do take a Diplo idea. I mean, trade efficiency would be nice, but we really don't have that much. I don't know. I don't. I just don't know. Just so many decisions to make. Anyway, 
Some people are making some good comments. The problem with trying to get to the Teutonic Order or the Livonian Order involved in our war is that they're just going to get smashed by Poland and Lithuania. Poland is um, allied with Denmark, so when we declare our independence, Denmark's going to call Poland in. Lithuania is a lesser partner in a union underneath Poland, so that means Poland plus Lithuania equals dead these guys, which means lost battles, which means occupation, which means we're just going to lose war score by having that happen. Whereas, on the other hand, I suppose if um, if they're not involved, then they'd probably ask for military access through Novgorod, um, and then they just wander wander up and see just directly. So we really need like a bigger ally, like maybe Hungary. Hungary could probably take on Poland. And if we really got lucky, maybe even Austria. Neutral attitude towards Denmark. Let's see. Let's find Denmark's enemies. Novgorod is one. Well, Novgorod usually gets beaten by Muscovy, so I don't expect them to be very strong. Scotland is their enemy. So does that mean Scotland will maybe become our friends? Why are you upset with me? Oh, because of the stupid Pope deal. That's right. Yikes. That's not good. And the Hansa, which of course are, are very small and weak. But they have naval power, so maybe. And they're upset with me as well. Hostile relations. I've embargoed them, naturally. Okay. Uh, so their rivals are out. Scotland as an enemy. The Livonian and Teutonic Orders. I guess we kind of just have to get enough allies all together that it maybe overwhelms Poland. Maybe the, T the Teutonic Order, the Livonian Order, plus Hungary equals dead Poland and Lithuania. Maybe that's what we have to do. You are rivaled with Austria and Poland. Why don't we go ahead and rival Poland and get the friend of, like, the enemy of enemy bonus with Hungary? Because we're, we're going to end up at war with Poland eventually. If we declare war on Denmark, we end up at war with Poland, so we might as well rival them. Um, I think that makes sense. We're going to want to improve relations with Hungary. Uh, improving relations with Scotland doesn't really seem... Well, I guess it, it kind of does. If we could get Scotland to stop being all pissy with us, then they're a natural enemy of... They are a natural enemy of Denmark. So that would be good. England, on the other hand, even though they have been fully improved, they, they are just not willing to be friends with us. They're not allied with Denmark, but they are friendly. We'll see if that changes at all. The other thing we could do is try to become enemies with Austria in order to help out with Hungary. I think not, though. You're working on the Livonian Order. The Livonian Order is close to being willing to support us. Okay. All right. I think I got it. I think I get it. I think I know what we're going to do. Let's keep thinking about this ideas thing. <clears throat> See, the problem, like, the reason I'm considering not doing dip diplomatic tech again now is that, let's say we do diplo tech and we build, want to build up the local trade power. Well, all of our trade power, almost all of our territory is in the North Sea. The North Sea, um, we can't collect from. We have to transfer trade power from here. Um, because the North Sea, is a, it's like a sea zone. And we, we end up funneling the trade into Lubick, which we only have one building. Two, I guess. Well, no. Okay, we own this. So we have two, two provinces that we could build stuff that's going to increase trade power. End of the day, we end up with a marginal increase in our trade power. And so what? If we really want to dominate trade in Lubick, I think we're going to do it with ships, not, not province upgrades. Which makes me think, okay, well, why don't we spend... Why don't we go for something that improves naval force limit, for example? Grand Navy. And now we can build an army of light ships that are really powerful in combat and then use those to dominate our trade node. Even further lower trade costs. It's, this seems really appealing to me. I mean, expansion ideas, don't get me wrong, that one seems good too, but... I don't know. It seems like it makes sense. Because we're nine, it's level nine until we actually get increased ships. And 14 for the Gallius. What's our mission? Improve prestige? We need to go to war. We're at 27 prestige. On the other hand, we could go with uh, an admin idea, but that's 
going to slow us down and get to level 5. And we really need the force limit bonus. We have so many coastal provinces. Every province that we build a, um, a temple in that's coastal, every single one is going to help improve our force limit. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, like I'm getting to the point where I have this type of knowledge memorized, but I'm pretty sure force limit is one quarter of your tax income. So 24 divided by 4 would be 6. Yes, from provinces plus 6. And then naval force limit, I believe it's um, it, it is tied to your <clears throat> to your force limit, or sorry, to your income. I think it's uh, 0.5 of your income. From ports 10.7. Or maybe it's not 0.5. I, it might, I think it actually is, because the part of the issue is here, not all of our provinces are coastal, so the math gets kind of fuzzy. But I'm pretty sure that each coastal province um, tax income divided by 2. So if we build a bunch of, of things, then we could totally get more ships. That's my point. All right, I'm gonna make the executive decision. We're just gonna do it. We're going with naval ideas. And we're hoping to get up to Grand Navy as quickly as we can. And then the other thing we'll unlock soon is the production efficiency plus 10%. Let's just do it. We're doing it. Can't stop me. Can't touch this. What are we doing on ships? Do we have enough ships yet? Lose prestige or get disorder? Well, uh, unfortunately right now with all of our war exhaustion that disorder seems pretty unappealing. Base revolt risk is already at 2% but it's offset by our legitimacy and the statute in restraint of appeals. That's 3.77. Okay. This number would be so much more useful if it showed tolerance on this screen instead of just on this screen. So essentially, I have to keep, since all of my land is the right religion, we need to keep base revolt risk below 4.9. So we can accept the 2% revolt risk for a year. That'll update to 3.82, but we should still have 0% in every province. Good, good. We don't want to get rid of our prestige, not our juicy, delicious prestige. Oh, and my uh, Diplomat, which I completely forgot about. Hey, Enemy of Enemies already ticked up. Wow, that was quick. Improve relations with you, yes. The Livonian Order. Closer. They're getting pretty damn close. They've rivaled Denmark. They probably had done that a while ago. And Scotland is going to... fairly quickly... Um, actually, it looks like our improved relations decaying faster than our penalties are going away. And they have a CB against me? Which one's that? Conquest CB. They hold provinces that they have claims on. Oh, they fabricated a claim on this, didn't they? Well, eventually we want to attack Scotland, but because Scotland's kind of decided... Ooh, the Teutonic Order is no longer supporting us. You bastards. So we have minus 50 opinion with them. Why are they no longer willing to? They're friendly with Denmark. You jerks. It might, it might just come down to we only can get support from people that have en become enemies with this guy. Maybe we do have to chum up with Scotland. More so than these guys. Establish Protectorate. Yes, that's what I want to do. <laughs> I just want to, ex just out of the blue, let's turn Scotland into a Protectorate. That seems fair. We're almost up to level 4 military tech, which is nice. Um, we are nowhere near our naval force limit. I should be building more ships. And I think we're just going to go really heavy on lights. They have, with our national ideas, we should be very, very good at, at fighting with light ships. They're inexpensive, they fight better, um, it's just it's just good overall. And in, in addition to that, the galley, even though the galley is pretty inexpensive, most of our actual combat I think is going to take place... Uh, this is considered inland sea starting right here, so all of this is inland, galleys would be nice here, but every all the like trade combat is going to be out here. 
Scotland's got five ships out there. Maybe we should go to war with Scotland just so we can blow up their navy. Prevent them from forcing wealth in that direction. Oh, decisions, decisions. Uh, let's just make a few more barks. I want to get up to the force limit. <coughs> The other thing we could consider at some point is just going deeply into debt. That's the other way to win the war. Fortunately, though, I was reading up on it as well, and I am, I'm fairly certain that um, the AI cannot annex players. So I don't think Denmark can actually annex us. I know they cannot inherit us, for sure, but I'm also fairly certain that they can't just annex us. And if they did, I wonder if it would actually like show a progress bar somewhere who knows I feel like we should probably have the army all together as well okay so papal influence um, we're never gonna compete with this guy are we oh wait we haven't voted for anybody yet I haven't voted on anybody at all my army is just useless Hungary being the Curia controller is kind of curious. Do you want to be my friend? Yeah, I'm not so sure that this is really going to work out. Even with the enemy of enemy bonus, the fact that they're neutral towards Denmark is such a huge obstacle. We need to pick people that Denmark is enemies with. So I guess it kind of has to be Novgorod. We have to try to buddy up with Novgorod. Like if we just got them positive, they'd actually be willing to support us. Just like that. So yeah. Let's let's totally flip our focus. Hungary is just not going to matter. I apologize if I don't seem like I know what I'm doing. It's because I don't. Because I've never played as a, a country that starts out underneath another country. So I just haven't had a chance to really experiment with how do you get it to go away. <clears throat> and let's get one more. Get all the way up to our force limit. I do think that war would be good if if possible, just to get ri get get that mission complete, get the the extra um why are you not where I told you to be? Basically get the extra admin points from actually leveling, leveling up. Going to level 1 stability. Can we even declare war on anyone but our liege? I don't think we can, so... And apparently I love them. That's sad. I don't, I don't actually love you, Denmark. I hate you. I think you're ugly, and I, I, want, a, I want a divorce. We, have, we are subject country, it is not up to us. Alright, so Scotland and the Hansa and Novgorod. I guess we kind of have to just maybe even ally up with them as well. Maybe we should stop embargoing them. I mean, our income from trade is not that significant. If I stopped embargoing them, it's not going to be the end of the world. Yeah. Hey, some people were so devout in their religion that they set out to help the poor and heal the sick. They were often called saints for their acts and were sometimes even believed to perform miracles. Oh, screw the papacy. We, we are truly blessed. <clears throat> I was considering bumping up stability to level 1, maybe even 2, before taking that. Um, but, you know... I don't know. It doesn't seem like stability is going to be what causes us to succeed. I mean, it does does help out with taxes. A little bit of trade power, but other than that, it doesn't really do that much for us. Spend 8 ducats and 10 admin power for yearly prestige plus 1? Yeah, please. That'll actually cause us to have a resting point a little bit higher. 
We have a total gain of 1.5, so we should should rest somewhere around like 33, I think it is. Makes it a little bit easier. Prestige, I care a little bit more about than, than stability, actually. Because of the, the morale of navies and armies. So yeah, okay. Well, I'm going to take a break here. Thank you for watching, everyone. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See you again soon.